Uh, so um, I will start with uh, some introduction to me. Uh, my Twitter handle is Davert. Uh, I am from Kyiv. I develop a testing framework conception, uh, but I am not a tester. I'm a developer and looking for testing from the developer's perspective. And um, also I develop uh, other open source projects, but uh, I already had a talk about my tools today, about conception. And now this talk will be more about the series, the uh, stuff you, you will need to for everyday usage and for everyday testing. Uh, so I have background of different languages, so sometimes for me it's like uh, hard to switch to PHP and sync in PHP because I know so many patterns from Ruby, JavaScript, and maybe my experience is based on uh, these uh, different platforms and languages, so um, I can compare and I can uh, uh, provide some uh, solutions that like uh, work for, for all of this stuff, uh, for all of these platforms. Uh, take your seats as well. Um, so, uh, like most of you, I don't like the testing. I didn't like it uh, because it, it took too much time of, of me. But uh, when I discovered some patterns uh, which uh, helped me uh, to make it fast, efficient, make my test uh, uh, look nice, and when they started to help me, I understood how good are them. But uh, still, if testing doesn't bring you some joy, Mm, it's probably a doing it wrong because tests should be fun and simple. Yeah, and um, tests should uh, follow your business expectations and specifications. Uh, that's why they are so important. Uh, we test uh, for all those uh, reasons listed. Probably there are some more reasons, but I don't have all of them, uh, or just forgot to put into the slides. So. There are lots of different stuff we call testing. And when we come to um, test automation, because as a developer we like to automate things, it appears we cannot uh, test so much as we could do manually. So we can actually do the uh, uh, this uh, stable uh, uh, to test the, the stability of the system. We can measure performance, uh, but we can't uh, uh, solve with unit tests the, sec uh, the security issues or uh, discover new bugs in software. So we still need a tester, the exploratory testing, and uh, for the, those kinds of tests. Uh, but uh, when the testing is like repeatable tasks that you can automate, it's, uh, it should be automated. And uh, it's really important to have them automated because our software grows. Uh, we have uh, uh, more and more requirements coming in. As our, uh, uh, we need to uh, release every time, deploy really often. And if we can execute the, the tests uh, whenever we want, uh, we are doing our job good. So uh, automated testing is first about establishing trust in your code base. If you have tests, you have a bit more confident in what uh, your platform uh, does. Uh, when you have constant changes in requirements and code base, you need automated testing. So contrary, if you don't have changes frequent, if you just uh, make your project work and you sell it and you will never do a support about it, so you probably don't need automated tests. Um, but I think uh, we, we are far from the uh, era of WordPress and Drupal development. We are doing a big complex enterprise uh, projects and uh, we, we, need, we need it. Uh, but from uh, what I have uh, seen from most testing talks, tutorials, uh, websites, they really look like this. Uh, so start testing, you will have tests, uh, wow, cool. But uh, just look into the agenda of this conference, we see that mm, something like really missing because we have so many testing talks on development conference. You know, it's, it's really strange, probably we are not talking on something. Um, uh, you know, say a few years ago, it was really popular to have framework uh, talks. Frameworks everywhere, Laravel, Symfony, and, and today we had like two talks or three talks about frameworks. So frameworks became boring. They just do their stuff, and it's okay. But testing, 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 it's still a thing. It's still a popular. So I'd like to make testing boring, boring as a framework. Make tests just work for you, and you will 
not need uh, you won't need uh, new information about it you'll j just make it uh, uh, part of your projects so let's collect the missing parts and learn how to draw this all at first, uh, the, te uh, the testing tutorials and talks are concentrated around tools. Yeah, I had one today already, but uh, we still don't understand after this talk what we actually need to test, where to put it, how to implement the infrastructure, and so on. And yeah, the most important question is what to test. Okay, let's uh, have a pre-priority list. So, business scenarios, uh, the stuff that makes money, uh, the uh, security cases, uh, uh, risks, uh, the stuff that will make us uh, really poor if it will fail in some cases. So all these things need to be uh, covered at first. Uh, so, uh, algorithms, functions with complex logic, the, the things you can't test manually easily. So for these cases you will surely need tests because test is better interface the, uh, for testing it. And uh, yeah, everything you can uh, track manually is better to, to start testing at first. And a uh, few uh, patterns you need to follow is the test should be independent and then test should be atomic. So when you start to de develop a test plan, the test uh, scenarios, start with the most general uh, uh, description of it. I'm bringing you a BDD example in Gherkin, but you can just write down. It's uh, not about BDD at all. It's about just uh, writing a description. Uh, try to formulate what you need in most general terms. Uh, I register, I should be registered. Okay, makes some sense, but we really miss uh, the details about it. Let's add them. What does it mean to be registered? Yeah, what uh, uh, we need to in input it in, uh, add uh, some examples into it. And once we add these details, we already have like a test in terms of BDD. Uh, but still, it's not about BDD, it's about just writing this, uh, down the specification. Uh, once we added these details to uh, the specification, uh, we can start to think how we can implement this as a test. And we need to focus on three things. Uh, the, and I'm just counting them by their priority. First, we need to make a readable test. Second, it should be stable. And third, it should be as fast as it can. And all these three points should be taken into account before the test development. Uh, actually, we have lots of options to develop our tests. And I'll tell, tell about them more. But uh, let's figure out what does mean these qualities. First, readability. So um, tests sometimes are uh, writing like, okay, I'll just uh, test this feature and won't, uh, will never see this test again. Uh, it will just uh, work and be green every time, and it's it's okay, it's fine. Uh, but uh, it's not. It when it, at some point this test breaks and you will need to figure out what was actually tested, you will find that um, you don't know what to do with it. So tests should be prepared for change because your requirements change, your code change, and tests should be um, easy to change as well. For it, it should be readable and compact and maintainable. And it could be reused because we add more and more cases to our uh, requirements. And if we have similar patterns, if we add new validation rule, we should be e uh, can easily just copy some parts of a test and add a new test in the suite. Not to spend much time on developing a new test. Um, and the example of badly written tests in terms of readability. Uh, you know, this, it looks like a controller test, and it actually is. And uh, from just from reading this code, you don't understand where the business logic happens. So if we think of terms as scenarios, executions, and uh, uh, what we get uh, in the end, this test looks absolutely meaningless to, to, to us because uh, what we are checking, we are asserting through that controller profile action and the user ID equals one. Oh, but what does it actually do? Is it a part of a business process, a part of a business rule? And those mocks or preparations, what they're about? 
it's uh, pretty complicated and you know the uh, it's I just simplified this test because in, uh, originally it was much much bigger and with uh, all the smokes and preparations we just missing the point what is it all about uh, the second case really really um, coupled to the uh, previous example that test should be stable uh, they should be stable in two uh, terms in uh, stable to execution and stable uh, for modifications so uh, it's really hard to understand how to make a stable test but we can try at least we uh, uh, we, as engineers, we know what uh, application parts are reliable and what application parts may, be, uh, may change in the future. We can make some assumptions about this. And uh, to make uh, the uh, stable tests, we need to, to focus on stable things. So at first, we, uh, for acceptance tests, we don't need to, we, uh, we need the most uh, specific locator as possible. Uh, we need to um, uh, don't deal with the magic and uh, try explicitly say what we are waiting for. And if, um, going down to the unit testing level, yeah, mocks, mocks. Um, I don't know why people so you like to use them, but you see um, uh, f first uh, problem about this code that uh, this uh, checks this this method will ex execute it once. What happens if it will execute it be executed two times? How it is affects the specification of the feature? Okay, it was executed two times. The test fails, but uh, the actual specification works. So, uh, is this requirement really necessary? No. Okay, next problem. The uh, we are mocking the get input filter method. Okay, nice, but if we do some refactoring, especially in this PHP storm, uh, we, this test will, uh, will break because the method name changed, and this test is still, uh, it will be there because this method name was hard-coded. We do some really stupid assumption about how this uh, method we are testing is being executed, and we should not. Um, we shouldn't tell the, te uh, the uh, test uh, how it will be processed, but we should track the, uh, the results of its execution. Okay, so how to write stable tests? Um, first, don't to tell how to do things, tell what you expect it to be done. And use interfaces uh, in your tests. By interfaces, I do not mean the word interface of PHP. Uh, yeah, interfaces in terms of PHP are pretty stable part because if you uh, extract some logic into and make it as interface, it's probably replaceable, it's probably stable, and it w it will survive for long. But interfaces is not only about that. You know there. Are Languages uh, where no interfaces, as I said, I have experience in Ruby and in JavaScript, and they are pretty okay with it. So interfaces, like more general term. So when something is documented publicly, and you can use this public API, it's already like interface. So uh, those parts you can move to the public domain and make it reusable. They are your public interface. So uh, whenever you um, write your test, use methods from your uh, public API from your domain. And yeah, I have a blog post about it. You will uh, find it later to read. So uh, this is uh, uh, points taken from the another uh, blog post I found in the internet about the uh, uh, which questions this is similar things. Uh, do we are we bound to the um, to the implementation? Maybe our uh, test is just uh, copy paste for from our code, and yeah, copy paste is not good, never. And are we duplicating the specification? Or uh, what do we actually check in this code? And yeah, this blog post about testing React components. So the, the, these problems are everywhere. And uh, the third uh, thing we need to consider is the speed. Uh, I won't tell you that tests are blazingly fast. Uh, no, they aren't. Especially uh, acceptance tests. Um, uh, so it's okay to have slow tests because um, 
yeah, it, it, the, your code base grows, your test base grows with them, and at one point you won't have this nice and sh shiny uh, green sign in a, in a few seconds. Uh, but you should be prepared for it. So uh, today we have era of SSDs, cloud CI providers, uh, parallel execution. You can uh, just uh, do whatever you like and uh, have like millions of tests and they will be executed in 20 minutes, 30 minutes or less. So it's okay to grow, it's okay to have a slow code base, but if you know how to parallelize them. But for development, for the fast feedback features, you need to have uh, tests which are focused on that specific feature and then should provide you the fast feedback. Once you commit the feature, you test it as part of the feature, uh, you uh, make a pull request and then continuous integration server checks for everything else you didn't uh, touch while you were developing your feature. Yeah, feedback is longer, but it, it's okay. It's, um, it's, uh, you can live with it. And yes, test, uh, testing is not uh, about speed. So readability should be more prioritized than the execution speed. Because yeah, we could have still be developing websites in C, but we are not doing it because we prefer clean, readable uh, code. And even today, Go is popular. Uh, I didn't hear so many pe people like develop websites in Go. Um, so every time you start developing a test, think how can you f uh, test it with minimal effort? Um, and uh, what are the possible options? Because mm, if you don't even have an idea how it can be tested, you probably don't know how to test it with minimal effort. And at first, we have two different kinds of testing, outer testing and internal testing. So uh, outer testing is testing from the, our user's perspective via our interface. And second, internal testing, testing from our code base as we do it in unit testing. And um, uh, they all uh, we put those tests into the test pyramid. Uh, it represents how many tests you need uh, on the different testing layers, and uh, the, what is the most important, the, the idea that you need all that layers uh, in your application to, to be confident about your testing. So you will need as unit tests and as acceptance tests, and they should be combined uh, because not everything can be tested from the interface, but um, you can't um, say your software is stable without touching the interface. And um, I just listed, um, mm, 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 I would say the test types, I already know I use it uh, regularly, maybe there are more, um, but let's uh, just go uh, through all possible uh, options of testing we, we can have. So. At the outer level, we have uh, browser-based UI tests. So they should be uh, concentrated on tested UI elements. So if you're, be, uh, if you're developing an application like Wunderlist, there is not much domain logic inside. It just, it just creates tasks and so on. But uh, the, what makes Wunderlist fun and why people use it? Because he, it has nice interface, it's really clean by design. So for such kind of applications, acceptance tests are more important than unit tests. And yeah, if you break something into the main, okay, the task, was, the ticket was not created in the deb database. But uh, if the button which creates a ticket isn't, uh, can't be clicked, oh, users will be angry at you, really. Um, but uh, sometimes uh, you don't need to test the uh, UI. Uh, maybe it's uh, because maybe your application is simple, and but you still need to test it from the outer level. Uh, we can send curl requests to it, uh, make responses, and try to emulate user behavior using this. Uh, those called uh, characterization tests and they're uh, regularly used for legacy applications because they are much faster, they don't need browser, and for legacy application you don't have too much JavaScript uh, to, um, um, to add the, the logic there, so you can use them. It's, a, it's really uh, fast and efficient. And going down to the internal level. So we have functional tests, as we call them in conception. 
uh, those tests uh, um, uh, emulate request and res uh, response. So you can treat them as controller tests because uh, controller is one of the starting point of the G test. So uh, we also try to uh, work with applications through its public API. We are emulating the get post requests. Uh, but uh, unlike the previous type, we have access to the application. We do it in the same PHP process. Uh, so we can freely test uh, the things we couldn't do in outer testing. So that makes functional tests to be really efficient and uh, uh, really fast uh, to work. Uh, so say of modern frameworks, Symfony, Laravel, Yeast, they have a layer for implementing such tests. So whenever you don't know how to start your feature, probably start with functional tests because uh, they are the most uh, easier to integrate because you are using your public API. And then we go deeper down to the integration tests. Yeah, you, we, we all know the difference between unit and integration tests. Some tests the service in isolation, some tests with, uh, with the components. Um, but let's um, look more into what all this testing um, are the testing levels mean for us as architects. Uh, by writing more and more tests to uh, levels, we need to understand pros and cons of managing them. Because yeah, code gate base grows. And um, on the downer side, we have stability to execution. Unit tests are really, uh, really stable in execution, but when you do some refactor, you will drop out, uh, uh, you can drop some classes, you will need to drop tests, so they are not stable to refactoring. While the UI tests, they are uh, tested on the, uh, using the, your public interface, they, stay, they are more stable to changes. Uh, but because of browser, JavaScript, and so on, they are not so stable in execution. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, browser tests will provide you with wide coverage, but uh, you need to, to have detailed co coverage in, in cases you work on. So you just can consider like uh, wide coverage is aircraft bombing and detailed coverage is a sniper. So you need to combine both of them to make an efficient army and yeah, some tanks to be in, in your integration tests. And they will fight your bugs and uh, uh, they will do it efficiently. Uh, to make unit tests, you will need to invest some time in building a proper architecture, making co uh, uh, code works, uh, following the solid uh, patterns, the dependency engines, you know all the stuff I'm talking about, testing, not about development now. And uh, yeah, when you don't have this option, you, when you can't refactor tests, bring in a better architecture, yeah, you can uh, try to test it from the outer layers. Uh, but then you will need to invest time in building architect uh, infrastructure uh, to execute it, uh, uh, such tests like databases, prepare browsers, and uh, so on and so on. And for parallel execution too. And yeah, speed of development. Personally, I would say to develop uh, UI tests, uh, they are much faster in development, but they are really slow in execution. And uh, how do we uh, test the features? The more detailed we want to, uh, the more detailed is our test, uh, the more uh, we, uh, the deeper we go to the, uh, to the our implementation. So on acceptance la uh, layer, we can tr test just happy path scenario, how user uh, would see it. On control test, we will add more scenarios. So like happy pass and unhappy pass. So user could check out and user couldn't check out. And on the main layer, we handle all possible cases of what does the couldn't check out mean. Maybe some validation error or another validation error or some security issue. So uh, we add more tests uh, to the uh, deeper layer, adding more and more and more examples. Uh, so we are writing down specific, uh, specification, we are writing examples for specification, and then we are choosing the appropriate uh, layer to implement it. Okay. Um, and uh, we already uh, talk, uh, talking about uh, how uh, to measure which, uh, which test to write, uh, so readability, stability, and speed. 
And so how we deal in this common situation? Yeah, for a new project, you are trying to build it using the uh, good uh, patterns. Uh, you have DI, you have a framework, and you uh, have all those possible options. So do it like I was uh, telling. Uh, well, less tests are for UI. Uh, keep it where you need to test uh, the interface things. Keep it uh, for happy path scenarios and add more tests for uh, edge cases to the integration and functional levels. Um, there is uh, some uh, different pattern. Uh, the problem we approach always is startup application. If we are uh, we need to develop it really, really fast. Uh, it should have been developed yesterday and not today. And we are trying to understand where should we put our testing. It's uh, uh, really a uh, uh, mad rhythm of development. And the answer sometimes means uh, answer: do not put your tests. Because if you have constantly changing requirements, if you're still not sure what you are building, if you, uh, your startup is not profitable yet, if you didn't test your business model, just, uh, okay, you can have some priority first business uh, tests, but uh, do not put the test for, uh, in the beginning. So um, wait while uh, this uh, software stabilizes. Uh, wait while, uh, while you have like business logic there. Uh, so s when you get some public API in the reliable parts of application you can use, then do a develop, uh, develop your tests. And yeah, because uh, today we are writing our startup in PHP, then we decided some parts should be moved to Node.js. Should we drop our tests? Yeah, we, we should drop our tests, but uh, we drop, drop our code. So don't waste time on um, building uh, such tests. So if you, if you build an um, UI test by writing some parts in Node.js or Go, uh, they will still be working. So probably you have just have written another kind of test. And this is especially interesting uh, case for uh, front-end testing. Because, um, uh, you know, the people try to test their React components, Vue.js components, and so things, but uh, in, uh, React wasn't a thing two, two years ago. And probably something you will come in two years after. So when we waste time on uh, testing uh, front, our front-end components, uh, we are forgetting the fact that uh, yesterday we were using Backbone, then we used uh, Angular 1, now we use Angular 4. So those tests uh, won't survive in the next few years because they are uh, targeted in a fr framework which constantly changes. It's mad, mad JavaScript world. They, uh, they are all hype-driven development and yeah, testing components using the framework which will be deprecated in months, two months, a year. Uh, it's a waste of time. So I would recommend use uh, UI testing uh, using the interface test testing. And there are tools to do it nicely and correctly. Um, so legacy project, they sh uh, should be tested as well. I think it was already so many discussed about it. And uh, I was talking about characterization tests. So when you approach a legacy pro project, start with characterization tests. Go through your uh, API. Uh, go through the interface this project already provides to you and write tests as much as you can to uh, handle all possible solutions. Then you can ref uh, start refactoring and while uh, those tests, your uh, characterization tests you wrote, while they are working, uh, you're okay. If they stopped working, probably your refactoring was not that successful. Fix it and continue refactoring. And while we refactor, we start to bring new tests into our application. And um, some questions uh, which are always uh, discussed in the uh, in testing and developing community. Uh, we don't talk much about the data management. And it's a pretty big topic. I will try to just to briefly summarize it. Uh, Tests need, uh, need some data uh, examples, yeah, um, we could use. And there are like three strategies into creating, managing uh, this data. Uh, first, each test creates uh, a new unique data set for this uh, test to be executed. So in this term, the, the uh, tests won't intersect because they are dealing with different data, but uh, the uh, data still kept between tests. 
Uh, second strategy is to uh, create a database before a test, uh, run a test. Probably it will be a really simple, small database. Uh, the test is executed, database is dropped, and you can uh, start another test. Probably today with Docker containers, it's, uh, it can be pretty fast. Especially if you put uh, your Docker container into memory uh, storage, you can drop databases, copy databases uh, really fast and efficiently. Uh, and uh, the most uh, uh, technologically, uh, no, uh, most architecturally um, better pattern is to crea uh, create data for the test and remove it. Uh, but uh, for in development uh, such uh, strategy, uh, you will uh, have uh, lots of edge uh, edge cases how, how to create um, create and remove tests and to make it e efficient. But yeah, you have three st strategies. So the, the first, the second is pretty st stable and stupid, and the third one is pretty smart because you will need to generate data, clean it up after test. So you will need to invest some time into uh, building this uh, support code which manages tests for you. Uh, so the question is always asked about uh, unit versus integration tests. And um, yeah, it uh, can be a big holiday about what are um, uh, pure unit tests, should you always make them? Uh, but if you start to think of terms of stability, readability, and so on and so on, it appears that integration tests are more readable in most of cases. Uh, once I, uh, it was uh, on my training, I uh, proposed a group of people, uh, first group who uh, were implementing integration tests for, uh, uh, for this sample project, and second group it implemented unit tests. And after they shared the results and they, they compared, and I asked them, oh, what solution did you like more? And even that group the, which implemented unit tests said that, wow, we, need, we like this approach more because less lines of code can test the same stuff. Sure, it uh, has its drawbacks because, uh, as we know, it uh, has some involvement uh, into the infrastructure we, we need to manage. So not everything is shown on this test, but at least these tests are readable and they f uh, follow the business logic. Uh, while when we add uni, uh, lots of mocks and unit tests just for the sake of testing, we really limit ourselves in stability and readability. Uh, but yeah, unit tests is good for pure functions, and it's uh, one of the reasons why we can't draw an owl, because unit testing is always shown on the code which is pure function, takes uh, parameters and produces the result. And while uh, when uh, code starts to do some side effects, like sending uh, messages, pu pushing to database, unit tests is not as efficient as they were in the in the beginning. Uh, algorithms, yeah, they are good tested with unit tests. And when you have lots of execution paths, it's probably a best way to have a unit test. So if you have some complex logic, if, even it works with database, but you have a dozen of execution paths, try to make it as a unit test. Uh, you will save your time. But in all other cases, integration tests are better. And yeah, my favorite topic, mocks. As I said, uh, I feel that they are dangerous in most of cases, especially when you try to mock dependencies of controller and create a unit test of controller. That's just crazy. And uh, where mocks are really necessary is for managing the services you don't own. Uh, so there are always a question like, should I mock my database? The answer is, do you own uh, your database? Do you manage it? If your database is a third party server uh, service somewhere on your company account, somewhere in states, so then probably you will need to mock it. Uh, but while when your database on your local host and you can manage it completely, then you don't need to mock it. Uh, we should mock the things that are not reliable because it's third party uh, internet connection and so on and so on. And we should mock things like emails because they are asynchronous and uh, we don't need real emails to be sent. But for most of cases, uh, you own all this stuff and you, you don't need mocks. And uh, back to this discussion, I just remembered one point. So if we uh, start building a unit test, and we are like, okay, we are building unit test, it works. Uh, we are doing it for uh, like 
making guess. Mm, okay, uh, I won't bring you a, any good example right now. But we we made a unit test for the co uh, code we uh, the which we own. Then we uh, decided to replace our code with some library which does the same requirement better. So now our code uh, unit test is testing something that we don't own but we still consider it to be unit test. And then the author of that library decides to add a uh, REST API into it, so it triggers third party service. And then it appeared that our test, we wrote initially a unit test, uh, is actually integration test because it uh, hits the external API. So the requir requirements didn't change. Uh, but we uh, have a different type of a test now. So it's, uh, it should be considered uh, to be a requirement issue, what, uh, how, how tests to write. And don't, uh, don't think what kind of test you will uh, write, unit or integration or functional. Uh, think of requirements, and then you will uh, have the test working. So even if you follow all the solid principles, the, uh, you have DI containers, you can uh, you do the constructor injections into your uh, code. If you, know, you can replace services of your application, it's not usually mean you should do. Sure, you need, you need to replace such services like mail, email sending and all I listed uh, uh, on the previous slides, but in most cases, uh, this stuff you, you own, you just test it. And um, uh, the question about 2TDD or not 2TDD. Um, you know, it's, uh, this discussion happens ten, for 10 years, for more, more, and more. And you see still people not convinced about the preferences of TDD. And we can talk more and more and more, and, and people won't be convinced. Even if you call them a bad developers, if you're there not following TDD, even the, if we blame them, they are still not uh, convinced about the following the TDD principles. Uh, so uh, we should understand the uh, idea behind TDD. Uh, TDD is about writing the specification before you write the code. And that's uh, what I was proposing from the beginning of the talk. We are uh, writing all the specification, and then we implement them as a test. And uh, if we don't, won't think about uh, uh, that uh, all those tests should be unit tests, we are f uh, far more free and into the implementation. So if our specifications can be tested from the outer level, we, uh, we can do the, uh, what is called ATDD, acceptance test driven development. Uh, we write the test for the interface, which probably not exist yet, but at least we know the scenario how it should go. So when we uh, made some uh, such acceptance tests, we can develop the uh, components, uh, we can develop the core, and once the, the tests are finally passing, we already uh, have working project. But uh, in most cases, TDD or not TDD is a personal preference, because uh, uh, it's really more like about discovering requirements, about implementing them, and if uh, you discover your requirements in each case, but by uh, writing the code, then you transform your code, then you refactor your code, probably until you stabilize your code and uh, you actually understand how it works, how the, it works in optimal way, you won't need to write uh, the tests. Uh, so you can start like, oh, let's create this class. Probably it, it will uh, solve my problem. You can start create classes. You create different classes, and then you discover some library in internet does it better. Was your tests ne needed to to build that stuff? No. So you had to drop everything, and you sp already spent so much time on building the code and the tests. And um, yeah, we got to the conclusions. So at first, uh, I'd like you not to think of unit tests, that you need unit tests. No, you need requirements. You need the scenarios of uh, usage. And only then you start thinking, where should I implement it in a better way? Should it be unit tests, functional, or integration? The less lines of code you will have, the more stable API you will use, the better tests you get. And uh, yeah, consider all these three options and make uh, uh, cool and long living tests. Okay, thank you. Yeah, oh, the funny part. 
Okay, so if anyone have laptops opened and if I break it, uh, it's your fault. Yeah. Ah, I didn't prepare <laughs> to throw. <laughs> Talk to him. <laughs> Mm. Oh, what do you mean by service? Ah, uh, when you are uh, in terms of microservices, yeah, yeah. So you need to bring them uh, all up, at least all this kind of microservices which are responsible for that part, and they are really important because uh, you won't be sure your application works if the uh, these services are not integrated, and yeah, you you always need to to bring them uh, for tests. And uh, one friend of mine says that uh, such acceptance tests help them more than unit tests for microservices development because they uh, show them a real picture of this micro microservices. So yeah, they can be uh, not uh, so uh, good in terms of speed, but you know, it, it can we can manage that. So where, where do I have about speed? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no. Uh, you have your services in different repositories. Yes. Then, yeah, probably you will need additional repository. But it's really hard to understand uh, how sh the versioning should should happen. Probably you will need to implement some semantic version f and treat the, uh, the test like a component of your system. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> no? No? But... Mm. So... Yeah, I, I didn't test it as well, but uh, the guy before me, he... he, he might Okay, ask uh, faster because no one hears you. Uh, <laughs> we, br we actually break it. It depends. It depends on the kind of project. If you have uh, already project around sustainable business, sure you have. You need to have tests for for scratch uh, from the beginning because your business is already uh, brings you money and you know what the uh, it is all about. When you start a new project and uh, you think, oh, it will be a new shiny Facebook for cats. Oh no, it will be a video platform and, and so on. Uh, then you don't need tests at the beginning. But still, you need to follow the solid principles and other principles when you develop your code. Okay, another question. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to. One, two. Oh, yeah, I'll hear you at least. Okay, uh, what do you think about the rule about the 90% coverage of calls for the components? I, I, I believe I met this rule many times, and sometimes I think it's a useless rule because I'm too focused on the covering. Yeah. So th uh, the question about code coverage and do we need 90% code coverage? Uh, we sure need 100% of code coverage in the domain logic, at the domain level, where business uh, things happen, where we check the security issues, and uh, for all these case cases we need. But other layers are not that important. So mailing services, con controllers, uh, 
they don't have any value in cut coverage. So I would probably use cut coverage to detect uh, spots which can be tested more. And especially this helps to test more the domain. And if you develop a standalone library, it should be uh, uh, really good cut coverage. But you know, for me, it's like I'm developing lots of open source and I can uh, measure cut coverage on uh, some libraries or tools I create. But I can't measure cut coverage on conce uh, conception itself because there are so many different layers of tests and so, so many different possible cases. We have uh, outer tests, lots of outer tests. So it's just not and measurable. Free one. So in some uh, times, it won't provide you any any good uh, value. Yeah. Yeah. The question box. Excuse me. Mm. Oh, it fun works again. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So you you mentioned yeah. that we should. Yeah, so you mentioned that we should uh, avoid uh, too often, to use mocks too often. Uh, Closer to you, please. Uh, really, when it's needed. Mm -hmm. So you, you mentioned that if that's a third party code, we should use it. But if it's our, no, our own code, we should not, not use mocks. Mm -hmm. But in case when we are having a unit test, so I've, I've always thought that the unit test means that we are testing a yeah. unit. Yeah. So if I'm, uni if I'm testing something that uses my code, I don't know, external class, but it's still my code, I should mock this external external resource. So if it's a separate class, I should mock it. But it's still your part of your code base. Yes, of course, but the units uh, should point me to the error. So when something will you fail... Ha you have stack trace to point you to the error. It's usually not a big problem. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I uh, showed uh, which uh, parts I think should be unit tested because of the efficiency of it. And uh, no, yes. what, what I mean is that uh, the unit test is a test of a unit, of an atomic, yeah. atomic function of, a, of, of, of a something bigger, mm -hmm. let's say. Yeah? So then when the error occurs, I exactly know where it comes from. But then I have to use mocks. Be because without it, I will test everything else. And I if it fails, I will have hundreds of errors because it fails and it, it interfaces all other features. So that's why in unit test, I think that, the, that we should use mocks whenever we, we, we sure. use some external resource, even if it's ours or ours. Sure. If we, if we uh, you write writing unit tests and we have external services, we use mocks. That's, that's the uh, definition of unit tests. Yes. Uh, the question is, uh, do we need, will we need it in this place? So uh, there's no general answer. So if you feel more confident with uh, such unit tests, yeah. But uh, if you're just creating mocks and mocks and defining mocks and say uh, putting sticks into your wheels, then probably you should switch to integration tests. Yeah, but, but you also said that even if we are testing the database, but the database is on our side, we, we shouldn't mock it. So the, the same with file system. So you you, you say that that uh, you say that we. Even in unit test, we should mock, not mock file system. And file file system uh, at one point can be uh, our external resources. We switch to AWS and something. So mm -hmm. it should it should be mocked. And database on local on local machine should not be mocked. Uh, usually yes. So you you are not you usually switching from your MySQL to some another cool shiny clouds provider service. So why, why, why so not to mock it to say that I, I expect that the mock will call this, this function and this function. So then I just expect a call. I don't expect that it will really work because I just expect that it will return and mm -hmm. I can define what I'll expect. And so I, I'm not dependent on the... On the Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's, so that's why I, I put on my last slide the word Hollywood <laughs> into it because yeah, we can, we can have uh, lots of discussion about it. So yeah, there are different opinions. Uh, I'm not pretending to to be the, the wisest man here. So I just uh, showing my points. So it can be different, and it really depends on the style you are used to and how you treat it. Okay. Any more questions? Sure. Only one Hollywood. No, that won't work this way. Ask more question. Uh, so, uh, do we should avoid situation where we testing the same code again and again? Because when we are not using mocks, um, certainly there will be situation. For instance, I do a component which do a several things, and for instance, it's having the caching caching component. So, for sure, I will invoke this part and test by the uh, by the feature which by, yes. by the service which implements that. So. This, is it, uh, this is it if, if I should if I should make the test for this for this base or 
just test on the level on the, on the top level and mm -hmm. I would have the 100 percent coverage with that mm -hmm. because uh, yeah. I already testing on the on the higher level but if I should if I should even test this this base component I think my picture of uh, this was about this uh, case so yeah you uh, uh, if your domain is a component here you will be t you will have it tested from the outer layer by this red request uh, but to uh, understand all its edge cases, uh, you will need to write unit tests. And how you manage all these tests on the not uh, intersecting, it's uh, pretty much up to you. But uh, yeah, edge cases should be as closer to the implementation as possible. Okay. Do we have more questions? And guys over there, maybe you have some something to say. What about time? Oh, we still have some time for so don't be shy, ask questions. Okay, so I'll uh, use my time to. Uh, I was really uh, asked for uh, organizers not to do any hiring or head hunting, but I will do. So as you know, uh, we are uh, developing a conception testing framework, and we need uh, help of maintainers, someone, uh, someone who will help to uh, manage different integrations than we, that we have. So if you use conception with Symfony, conception with Laravel, conception with Zen framework, we really need your expertise, uh, because uh, uh, for the guys, who, uh, I can't track all these frameworks and I can't uh, track uh, all the edge cases. In it. So if you could help us with reviewing uh, the, uh, the issues, reviewing pull requests, uh, we will really, be really glad to, uh, to accept your help. And the only thing I can prop, uh, offer to you is maybe a free JetBrains license of open source contributors, lots of honor, and you will be awesome guy. Uh, you will be maintaining awesome project. So, conception and uh, ask me on Twitter or in Skype if you will be interested in, in such case stuff. Yeah, marketing minute is all over. <laughs> Thanks.